Hi, my name is Charlotte Devlin. I currently teach at Skidmore College in upstate New York. I am a music scholar. Um, so I'm continuing my research on Mongolian music and in particular um, I've been studying Mongolian music in China for over 10 years um, in Inner Mongolia and I'm looking at the situation on the side of the border. Um, in particular, I'm looking at students and faculty who cross the border regularly. Yeah, that's a long story. So I actually was um, studying Chinese in Shanghai in 2002 and my roommate was Mongolian. She was actually from Mongolia and she was also a foreign student in uh, the Foreign Students Dormitory where I was studying and she sang beautifully but didn't consider herself a singer and they had um, late night Mongolian parties in our dorm room with drinking and singing and that was the first spark for me and um, so when I was deciding on a PhD research topic um, I thought maybe rather than going to Mongolia since I was interested in string instruments and all sorts of other things other than just song, um, maybe going to Inner Mongolia would be easier for me linguistically. So that was 2009, my first trip, and it's been a very long journey to learning the Mongolian language so I can do research here. I'm very glad to kind of be able to do this now. It's going very well so far. I'm. Um, working uh, with some partners at SOIS and some other institutions and um, yeah, things are going very well so far. Um, what does SOIS stand for? Oh, the, um, the Culture and Arts University of Mongolia. Yeah, so um, I've been kind of continuously doing research in Inner Mongolia since 2009 actually, so it's almost 14 years. Um, and I was back in 2010 and 13, 15, 18, and I was here in 2017. So, um, yeah, there's quite a bit of differences and um, you can notice that my, my first impression in Mongolia was that there's a lot of Russian influence. And um, probably if someone was from here to go to China, obviously they'll see a lot of Chinese influence in Inner Mongolia. Um, but you probe deeper and you can see that there are a lot of similarities in the culture and um, yeah, I'm just really curious how these, um, basically since 1911, um, what the different pathways to music on the stage has been in both regions. Yeah, so um, one thing that's really interesting is um, there does seem to be a little brother, big brother relationship. So the Inner Mongolians often come here um, really believing that this is kind of the source of true knowledge about Mongolia. And um, particularly with the horsehead fiddle, long song, and throat singing, these three are um, extremely big for attracting students to come here. Uh, I think there's a variety of reasons they come, um, but I think they are hoping to get something that maybe they wouldn't get at home. Um, and I think for some of them, it's, it's sort of learning what does this look like without um, the, the kinds of influences that you might get in Inner Mongolia. Well, Charlotte, thank you for coming by. Thank you. And we wish you Good luck in your research and your future endeavors. Okay, thank you.